When one of our menu items over here is tapped, we wanna bring in a detail view with more information. Now, we're already placed in inside our content view one of these navigation stacks. So now we can use that with a new view type called a navigation link to show that detail view. This takes two pieces of information, a destination, what to show when the link is tapped, and also what to show on screen for the link. Now in practice, this works like most of the other containers we've seen so far. So we're gonna try out the neat little shortcut. Although we'll show a detail view shortly, in the meantime, as a prototype, we can use a regular text view as our destination. And so when we wrap our item row here with a navigation link here, our destination will be a text view of the item's name. And the label see on screen for this navigation link is our whole item row like that. So we're saying the item row is what we see on the screen and when it's tapped, show the item name just by itself on a new screen. Now, if you run that or see it in your canvas on the side of Xcode, you will see two important differences. First, we have the little gray icons, the chevrons on the leading, or sorry, trailing edge, the right-hand edge of our list here, saying to users, yes, you can tap on this to get more information. So you gives us a correct behavior by default here. And second, when you tap on one of these things, you'll see the title you tapped, maple French toast or stack of pancakes and similar. And be able to present simple text views as a destination for your links is a real time saver when you're building up a great UI. Of course, here we want more. We want a nice big picture, some more details about the food and more. So press Command N, make a new Swift UI view. This time I want you to call it item detail .swift. Now, as with item row, we've got to give this thing a property to store which menu item it should show on the screen. And we'll store it here. So we'll say, uh, let item be a uh, menu item like that. We also have to change this preview code down here so it knows what to do in our little preview canvas. So I'll say our item being passed in is menu item.example. Now as well as list rows, we're gonna start off simple and iterate until we get something we can actually work well. First, a simple version of our item detail view will have the item's image and description side by side with a title as well. So we'll say we have a vStack with an image of the item main image and a text of item description and a nav title for the vStack of item.name. And I want you to be able to see that in action immediately. So we're gonna go back to content view and change our navigation link here so it shows an item detail view when the link is tapped. Now there are two ways of doing this in Swift UI, with the simplest one just being to place the item detail code right where that text is right now. You can say item detail, item of whatever items from our for each. And that works. You can press Command R now and see it. I can say French toast here, or we'll do stack of pancakes and similar. It works out of the box. Really, really nice. But behind the scenes, SwiftUI is having to do more work than you might think. Every time it makes one of these list rows in our, our list here, it will have to make the navigation link for that row. Here, always have navigation links attached to them. And when it does that, it will also create the item detail inside the navigation link. It's doing lots of work here. That's one way of doing it, but you can see it's quite ineffective. It's far from ideal. And so SwiftUI gives us a faster and simpler alternative. We can attach any hashable object as the value for our navigation link. And then use a new modifier called the navigation destination to tell SwiftUI, hmm, when you're asked to load a menu item, please load an item detail view with that value attached. This takes two steps. First, we are change our navigation link so it has a value of the item itself. This is the value for the whole link. We'll just do value of the item. And that works because it already conforms to hashable. And now delete the first closure, leaving just the label like that, the item row. And now we've got to add another modifier to our navigation list area here. You can do it before title or after, it doesn't really matter where you do it. It's called navigation destination. 
where to go when some type is triggered. And we're gonna say our type is menu item.self. So when you receive a menu item, here's what you should do. Go ahead and receive the item coming in and then use that to make an item detail with item of item. I prefer trailing close syntax. I'll just clean it up real fast like uh, uh, that. Otherwise, it's the same code. So when I receive a menu item, get it in as item and pass it straight onto an item detail like that. And the result will be the same. You can press Command R and navigate to Porridge Deluxe, whatever you want to. The same result happens. It's just more efficient and simpler to work with. Now, in our preview code, you can see we have uh, the image, we have the title, uh, the description, and so forth here, but you can't see the item name in the navigation title. It's not visible there right now. It does appear when you run the code back, but not in the preview. And the reason for this is because SwiftUI doesn't understand there's a navigation stack here. It doesn't know it's being, it's being loaded inside one of these things. It just previews a simple item detail. To fix this, we can just modify our preview to have a stack right in there. We can say navigation stack here, then item detail. And this does not change anything to do with our actual runtime code. Now it goes to the app store's code here. It's just for previewing purposes in Xcode while we're writing our application. Second, you can see that we have a, uh, some layout issues inside our code here. It's not ideal by a long way. Uh, first, this title at the top here, Maple French Toast, shouldn't be big. Because Apple recommends keeping that big text style only for top level views in your view hierarchy. And we can fix that by adding another modifier to our VStack called Navigation Bar Title Display Mode. And it's automatic by default. We're gonna ask for inline size here, a smaller size Apple recommends. Second, Having this image go edge to edge is fine, it's a good idea, but having the text go edge to edge looks quite strange. It's not what we want here. We can fix that by adding a padding modifier to the text, bring it in from all the edges we have. Now this padding modifier allows us to specify which size we want padding on, as well as how much padding to apply. But when we just say padding like this, it'll apply padding to all edges. How much padding depends on the context, what device it's being run on, what's around it, and similar. Third, it looks quite strange having our content aligned vertically. Our eyes are naturally drawn to information at the top of the screen. To fix that, we can apply another spacer directly below that text. We can put a spacer here, and it will fill all the space at the bottom and push the text and the picture to the top, much nicer. This is starting to look good, I think, but we also have to try and find a way to show off who took this lovely picture of our maple French toast, a photo credit. Now we could put this uh, below the picture or inside of a credits alert or something like that, but a better idea is to put it over the image in the bottom right corner, a little photo credit box there. Now you've already met horizontal and vertical stacks, that's H stack and V stack. But SwiftUI gives us a third option called a Z stack or a Z stack that handles overlapping layered views. To use one here, we'll wrap our image in a Z stack like this. And after the image, we'll place our photo credit. I'll say the text is the photo is by item.photo credit like that. And it creates the image and puts this photo text on top. Chances are, as you've got amazing vision, you're gonna to struggle to make out that text. It looks like photo Joseph Gonzalez, perhaps. Um, so we're gonna apply some modifiers to the text to make it clearer what it actually says on the screen. First, I'll add a little bit of padding, just like four points around the edges. Then a black background, then a font of caption, and then a foreground color of white. So it stands out neatly. Be careful. If you swap the order of background and padding, it'll do something different. The padding now is applied after the background. So the background fits the text fairly precisely, whereas you put background after the padding, it pads it first, then colors that padding as well as the main text. So it's more visible now. 
but that just means we can see it looks even worse, right? This is not a good thing here. It really shouldn't be right in the middle of our main picture for this page. Uh, to fix this, we can add some alignment to our Z stack. So that label goes into the bottom right corner of our screen. We can say a Z stack has an alignment of bottom trailing and it'll go across there now. You can, if you want to, even apply some offsets to pull it up just a little bit in and up from the corner of the picture. We can say the offset X minus five, Y minus five, bring it in just from the edges like that. There is one other layout issue and you might not even have noticed it yet depending on your Xcode configuration. Some parts of our UI hang off the screen. They look pretty grim. And we saw it a minute ago, just briefly before the offset was applied, you can see it's photo Joseph Gonzalez and the offset fixes it, but it's not great. Um, now I've been using iPhone 14 Pro here, a fairly large screen size, not the biggest, of course, as a Pro Max as well. But if you try a smaller device, like an iPhone SE third generation, that is a significantly smaller screen. And you see we have the same problem now. We have photo Joseph Gonzalez something. It just hangs off the edge. This all happens because SwiftUI likes to display images at their natural size by default, meaning they take up the same amount of width and height as their pixel save take up. Our main image in this case is just too wide for many screens. It's iPhone Pro Max size. So the iPhone SE can't display it fully, the iPhone Pro uh, 14 Pro can't display it fully, and similar. And so rather than just trying to squish it down for us, SwiftUI lets it hang out the edge of the screen. And in doing so, it allows everything else to be pushed out as well. The whole view becomes bigger than the available space. To fix this, we've got to add two modifiers to our image to make it work properly. One to make it resizable, it can be scaled down upwards freely, and one to make it scale to fit the available space correctly. So we'll say the image is resizable, like that, and you'll see it's now stretched and filling all the space but also scaled to fit. Keep its natural aspect ratio, don't warp the picture. And with that change now, the picture runs edge to edge fully, doesn't go beyond the screen anymore. No matter what screen size we have, a small one like this is fine, but also the larger um, 14 Pro I had a moment ago is also now correct here. Um, as well as scale to fit, there's also scale to fill and they do subtly different things. This is also not being warped, but now expands upwards. It doesn't mind if bits of the picture are being clipped off and missed off, as long as it keeps its aspect ratio. Whereas scale to fit will say, actually make sure the whole picture is visible, even if it means leaving a little bit of space empty. Uh, you can choose. Both will automatically retain the aspect ratio, and often that's the most important thing.